Good morning. It's actually noon, but I've been up for a while. I've been editing and I decided to take a break. I'm going to put the Swiss chard and the Komatsuna away. Okay, this one could definitely be in a quart. I harvested almost six pounds of Swiss chard and almost six pounds of Komatsuna. Five pounds condensed into two jars. So cool. Now my experience with rehydrating greens is with kale. It rehydrated perfectly. Like you really could not tell that it was dried kale. It was incredible. Of course, I use that for cooking. I don't use that for salads or anything like that. So I am confident that these will rehydrate the same way. When I discovered that kale rehydrated so well, I absolutely fell in love with preserving it that way. It just makes so much sense. It doesn't take up too much room. It's easy to hydrate. It takes maybe 10 15 minutes and it's ready to use in whatever dish you want to put it in we are back here again we are making lunch i had mac and cheese and those fake doritos for breakfast a plus breakfast yes it, you know what it was delicious and those fake doritos are actually quite good they definitely hit just like doritos for me so whatever doesn't matter so for lunch i'm making the the feta gnocchi sheet pan pasta thing I'm using the cauliflower ones from Trader Joe's, which are the best. I love them so much. The corn meatless chicken diced pieces, cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes, whatever, small tomatoes, feta. I'm gonna use this one up because it has a tiny bit in there and then start this one. Red onion, garlic, green onion, a gray zucchini from the garden. And I think this eggplant, I think this eggplant was ripe when I picked it. I swear it's losing its color and it's not glossy. So I don't think it's growing anymore so I picked it. I don't know. I guess we'll see when we cut it into it. So yeah, let's throw this in there, I guess. Hmm, is this ripe? It has a lot of seeds. I don't know. I want to say that it is ripe, but the green is throwing me off. Maybe it's the variety. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you are a person that knows a lot about growing eggplants. So this recipe is from Plant You, Plant Y-O-U. It's the same person who I got the dumpling salad recipe from, which by the way, I was reading the comments on that dumpling salad post on Instagram and people were freaking out because she used bagged salad and everyone was like, oh my gosh, you're using bagged salad, processed food. And like, you know, having a general meltdown about that, even though they're not the ones eating it. When I saw her reel, I immediately was like, wow, I have a Napa cabbage from the garden and I have frozen dumplings. This is perfect. I believe the series that that salad was in, it was like 15 minutes or less type of meals, like quick meals, right? And the reason why those comments perturbed me or because, you know, not everybody has the time to buy an entire head of lettuce. So therefore, sometimes they buy bagged salad. Some people live alone and don't want to eat salad for five days straight. So they buy a bagged salad to eat for, you know, two meals. And I just couldn't get over how people couldn't take the recipe as inspiration and go, oh, wow, this is really great. Like, I can go buy heads of lettuce and make my own. But instead, they chose to just complain in the comments about how she was using processed food which is like, who cares? If you wanna make the dumplings from scratch, go for it. Nobody is saying that you are not allowed to do that. So I don't know. I wanna see all those people that were complaining so much in the comments. Like I wanna see you make one of those salads from scratch. I want the dumpling recipe. You know, I wanna see what greens you chop up. <laughs> Of course, I'm joking, but I just found it a bit ridiculous. Like, come on people, if that recipe doesn't vibe with you, that's okay. Like, move on, you don't have to say anything. If it's just like I'm using processed gnocchi and this chicken that who knows what's in it, I don't know. Well, I do know, but you know, I'm not gonna make all that myself. I don't have that kind of time. It's also totally okay to eat processed food. If that's all you can afford or that's the only time you have to eat, like who cares where it comes from, you know? The only important thing is that you're you're eating food. <laughs> it's 
So yeah, that's just my little two cents on there. You should go support her though. She has really good recipes. I browsed the website the other day and picked my meals for this week off of her website. And I think they're actually really good. They are plant-based, but you can of course add whatever protein you eat in there. They're just suggestions. You know, that's pretty much all recipes are. Suggestions, guidelines, add what you like or omit what you don't like. Where am I gonna put the chicken and the gnocchi? I didn't have room to mix all of it in that bowl, so. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll see how this turns out. Also, I have to add the feta. <laughs> I will probably go through and try to mix everything up as best I can, like halfway through. Okay, that equals like a block of feta, right? <laughs> I'm gonna put this in the oven for 40 minutes and check it halfway through to see what's going on. Do you see now why I needed to get those greens out of the freezer? Because the tomatoes are seriously taking over. I have so many of these vacuum sealed tomato bags. I am very grateful for this because I did not get enough tomatoes last year to can. And that is my ultimate goal this year. I believe it is on my list of things to do this week. So if I don't can tomatoes in this video, you will definitely see it in the next video. Here we go, let's try it out. I've only had this with pasta, so gnocchi is a new one for me. Let's find one, there we go. I love the cauliflower gnocchi, they're so good. I love that cauliflower flavor. Here is a chicken and a zucchini. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I really wanna find an eggplant. Ah, here we go, here's one. They definitely cooked, that is good. I was afraid it was gonna be weird, but it's definitely cooked. I taste the eggplantiness from it. It tastes a little green, so I don't know. Maybe it was unripe. Ugh, I don't know. I hope we can get one more eggplant this season. Ugh. Mm. <laughs> it needed some balsamic glaze. And usually I would add fresh herbs, parsley, basil, all that. But I just really don't feel like going outside and dealing with that. So I'm just going with some balsamic glaze. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good morning, it is 10 a.m. I already ate, I had my tea, and the dogs are done. So it is time to go to the garden and check it out. I have not been since Saturday and it is Wednesday. I don't know, I'm a little scared to go. <laughs> we'll see what's going on there. I'm sure there's so many tomatoes and beans to pick, pinto and the purple green beans. So we're gonna go do that and come back home, deal with tomatoes, I think. I'm defrosting the tomatoes because I'm hoping to can these all up this week, maybe tomorrow, that is my goal tomorrow. And we have more on the counter over there ripening. We're gonna be adding to this pile of tomatoes. These tomatoes right here are actually from last year. I did not get a big enough harvest to do anything with them, so I saved them until this year. So I'm very excited to use them up and finally can up all of our delicious tomato products. I will see you at the garden. All right, we are here. Also, look at these weird seed pod things. Are these sweet peas? That's what they look like, sweet peas, and then they create these like seed pods. They're so funny to me. Here we go, everything looks good. Ooh, lots of tomatoes. Oh my gosh, so many. Ooh, let's check the cantaloupe. We have to see the cantaloupe. Oh yes, look, <sighs> so cute. We totally need to get rid of the calendula. I'm pretty sure it has powdery mildew on it. So my goal this week is to get rid of all of the calendula in this corner. I have not seen a poppy in a while and they're looking like they're drying up. Maybe it's just getting too hot, too dry for them. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, look. Oh, 
Ugh. A purple bell pepper. We have a couple flowers on this one, but this is our only purple bell pepper. I love the contrast between the lime green and the purple, so pretty. Here is the other cantaloupe that we have. There are so many actually on the plant, but those two are the biggest that I have so far. Here's a long bean. It looks like it might be ready to harvest actually. And there are some more flowers growing. That's great. I think it stopped producing because it got so hot. This one has a couple flowers as well. So it's coming back to life, I think. We have a yellow squash here. A couple more days on that. Some gray zucchini. And and I believe we have another bell pepper over here. It's an orange bell pepper. It just hasn't gotten its orange coloring yet. Excuse me, who are you? Are you supposed to be there? Look, we finally have cucumber plants sprawling here. I should probably trellis them. Ugh. It's like I get rid of the trellis and then they finally start growing. I don't get it, but I don't see a single cucumber yet. Ow. Oh my gosh, that bee almost stung me. Anyway, I don't see a single cucumber yet, even though there are tons of flowers. It's been flowering forever, but no cucumbers. This is Swiss chard and I'm over it. It is now a sacrificial plant to whatever bug wants to eat it. I have offered to give it to some fellow gardeners and they declined. So uh, I'm just stuck with it. Okay, Mr. Shem. Girl, look at you. Oh, what? Oh my gosh, this is like red. This one's more orange. <gasps> Stunning. Wow, they're so pretty. Finally, look at that. Also, look at that. That is a whole pumpkin. It's orange. First thing first, I'm gonna go through all the pinto beans and find the dried ones. What is that? Some kind of spider, spider egg thing. I don't know. So this is a neighboring community garden plot. Look how beautiful these are. Are these zinnias? They're really pretty. This one, wow. That one's beautiful. Oh my gosh. I'm afraid to touch them in case a bee assassin is under there lurking. <laughs> I'm just kind of scared. This one is so cool. <gasps> Beautiful. Look at this person's plot. You can't even see their path anymore. <laughs> just overtaken by everything. This neighbor only grows flowers. Look how beautiful these are. These ones are cool. Whoa. This one's extra, extra dark. Wow. Pretty. This person has like purple tomatoes. It looks like they put cinnamon or cayenne or something on there to keep the grasshoppers away probably. Beautiful. Look at that. That is all Allison, the purple. Wow, it's, it's really spread. So beautiful, I love it. I tried to grow Allison and I, I never got any of it. Uh, we'll have to try again next year. I really like these ones. Apparently they are zinnias. I can't not remember the name. It was like something like fine or small or I don't know, but they're really beautiful. I love the color. I like how small they are. They look really dainty and, and pretty. Oh no, my tomato. Speaking of tomatoes, this person only has tomatoes. So many tomatoes. I'm honestly jealous. I want to do this. I want a whole pot of just tomatoes. Our mammoth sunflower looking beautiful. This sunflower has like two in one. I don't know if that's like fasciated or fasciated. I, I can't remember the term or, or how to pronounce it, but that's that. It's pretty cool. I also really love these pink flowers. I have no idea what they are though. I think they're also so pretty and dainty and cute. They look really beautiful with the bachelor buttons here.
I just got home and I did a thing. <laughs> yes, I bought more jars on the way home from the garden. <laughs> this is actually like Walmart's brand, I think. These were $11.44, while the ball half gallon mason jars are usually $16.44, I think. I also got regular mouth quart jars. Since I'm only gonna be using these for dry storage, that is why I bought the off-brand jars. Not saying that the off-brand is like unsafe to can with, but I've never had an issue with a ball, so I usually save my ball jars for canning, and I'm trying to convert all of my dry goods into these regular mouth jars that are off-brand. <laughs> just to give me my good jars back and, you know, have all these jars on the shelf just for consistency. I did not know they made half gallon jars, so that's pretty awesome. I think $11 is not bad for six of them. I think I'm gonna pour my kale in here actually, just to get it out of two jars on the shelf and save some space. I've been putting my just picked pinto beans in here to dry for like a day or two before putting them with all of my dry stash of pinto beans. <laughs> it just helps to make sure they are perfectly dry before I store them with the other ones. You definitely don't want moisture in there at all. You can tell because they're a little squishy. The really dry ones will be crunchy like this versus this one that is not dry. <laughs> See? It kind of bends like you want it to be crispy. So I just hang them in here. I have the parsley up here and yeah, just wait until they are crispy enough. This is the dry stash that I'm talking about. I really want to do a live stream where I shell the pinto beans live and also trim up the onions that we have in the garage. We have so many pinto beans. Here are the ones that we already shelled and weighed. Everything else is in here waiting to be cracked open. <laughs> it's so satisfying. And just like that, my tomato stash over here is replenished again. I try to store them all on their shoulders, which are the stem ends here. Of course, aromas, they're hard to do that with, so they just kind of hang on their side. I have decided that all the beans I pick, I am going to blanch and freeze them. We just get so many, and I just really have to plan them into my meals or else I can't eat them. I know that sounds strange, but sometimes I forget what's in my fridge when I close the door. It's called object permanence, and I struggle with that. So it's easier for me to blanch all these and freeze them and then plan them into my meals in the future. Also, I forgot to pick the long bean. <laughs> Whoops. So I know you are curious about how many pounds of food that I've grown so far this season, and I'm about to add in everything we weighed today and update it all. So let me show you what is going on here. So I already added the dates for everything that I'm gonna add, and I'm just gonna enter in the weights for you, and you can kind of see how many pounds of each item I've grown so far this year. So this is purple green beans. Today I harvested 73. So we've grown almost two and a half pounds of green beans. That's so great. I love that. Of course, we're getting more every single day. 650.8. That's a lot. 8.2 pounds of bush steak tomatoes or just big slicer tomatoes, although I'm using them for sauce, which equals to like $17.99 if you were to buy them in the store. Almost three pounds of the 4th of July tomatoes, which are just kind of like smaller slicing tomatoes. That equals to $6.53. Let's go ahead and add the Romas. That equals 5.63 pounds of Romas and $7.26. And for our final weight of how much I've grown so far this season, it is August 28th. I have grown 58.95 pounds, nearly 59 pounds of food, and my savings equal out to $109.14. That's pretty awesome. Also, we went over 55, so we can go ahead and add today's date right there 
in our milestone list. <sighs> so, so grateful to have a really productive garden this year. It's so exciting watching the tomatoes grow. We've gotten so many compared to last year. I have a little tomato total off to the side, although you can't see it. There we go. I think this is, yeah, this is lined up with all the tomatoes. So, so far we've grown 16.83 pounds of tomatoes <laughs> this year. That's so cool. We did not grow that many last year, that's for sure. I don't have them totaled up, but we had a little small one called Gardener's Delight that produced half a pound. Our Romas produced four and a half pounds, and that was it. So five pounds of tomatoes last year versus 16 pounds so far. I love it. So amazing. I'll take it. I'll take anything, honestly. Canning tomatoes coming so soon. I think tomorrow I might start working on it. I ordered a tomato sauce food mill. Although I have like a little small food mill, I really want like the big huge one that you crank and it has like a hopper and the seeds and skins will pop out the side. I'll show you what I'm talking about when it arrives tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm gonna try to organize this just a little bit. I don't wanna be here all day, but I'm gonna do a little bit and then maybe tomorrow I can do a little bit. My goal is to switch out the wide mouth ball mason jars with the regular mouth off-brand jars, which I'm actually gonna wash in my dishwasher first. So I'm just gonna pull jars and put them on the counter and then tomorrow when those other jars are dry, I will fill up the new jars and throw them back on the shelf. I really have no idea how to organize this. This is really wide, so my jars usually hang out on the back and this collects dust or I keep putting junk on it, you know? So <laughs> I just don't know how to store everything so that I can see what I need, but also have everything stored efficiently, if that makes sense. Like this whole situation, I don't know what's going on. Everything is in a different jar, which I kind of like, but I cannot see this back here because this jar is too tall. Yes, I can move everything, but it's all in alphabetical order, which is how I like it. So it's either I change the jars or I leave it. And then we also have this situation. I have dried chilies over here, dried mushrooms, dried herbs, calendula, yarrow, catnip, holy basil. And then I have odds and ends over here. We have nigari, we have egg replacer, okara, okonomiyaki flour, pumpkin pie spice, almond meal, like so many things. And I don't know how to organize it all. So that's what I'm gonna work on. We've lived here since December, so I definitely think things could be organized better now knowing what we use the most of. So I'm gonna set you up over here. I'm probably gonna put you on a time lapse and I'm going to watch YouTube and organize. Perfect. This is what it looks like currently. Kind of switch some things around. I think it looks cleaner. I still have some more things to add, like the kale up here once I switched it into a half gallon. I left a space over here for all of the things we're gonna can, the tomatoes and all that. I have tea down here and like herbs for tea, medicinal herbs, etc. More tea over here in this corner. These are spices, dried mushrooms, soft white wheat, hard white wheat, and brown rice. We use these three things things really often. So that's why they're right here. The dried greens, dried daikon. These are like beans, lentils, peas. And then we have a lot of seeds and nuts here. Over here we have bulk grains for the grain mill, as well as the dried chilies and a lot of starches, baking soda, baking powder, xanthan gum, okara, all that kind of strange stuff back there because I don't use it as often. Over here with DJ KK, we have brown sugar, coconut sugar, cacao, powder, powdered sugar, kind of like sweet things for baking, chocolate chips. Here we have starches, cornstarch, arrowroot starch, mung bean starch, panko, rice flour, sweet rice flour, vital wheat gluten. Over here we have more starches like rice, quinoa, which is technically a seed, but you know, I kind of use it like a starch, cornmeal, rolled oats, steel cut oats. Over here we have protein powder, MCT oil, marine greens blend, things for smoothies, electrolytes, 
This is flour that is store-bought. I haven't used it in so long, but it's there for a backup. Sugar, salt, and I think that's kind of it. I have more like spices, nutritional yeast, toothpicks, Lebkuchen Gewürz right here, vanilla extract, all that good stuff. And then we have instant noodles, rice cooker, cookbooks, storage containers, a plant, my squeeze master, food processor, and all of my canning pots up there. On the bottom, I have fermentation vessels, my KitchenAid, Instant Pot, air fryer, blender, grain mill, and enameled cast iron pots. Underneath the shelves is where I store all of my jars, which if we turn around, you can see all of this mess. And these are just jars that go underneath the shelves. These are my empties. It's really easy to pull these out from underneath the shelves and grab whatever I need. Empty jars take up so much space. So I really don't want it taking up really necessary real estate on the shelves. So that's why they go underneath them. I'm leaving these out because I'm not really sure which jars I'm gonna use for my tomato canning adventure in the next few days. So I'm gonna leave these out until tomorrow. Over here are Miss miscellaneous jars, jars that are not mason jars. These are what I would hold dried spices in a little dusty, <laughs> but I love to keep like spice jars and then put my own spices that I've grew and dried myself in them. I also keep the grinders because I think it'll be so fun to make my own like grinded spice blend. So that's a future project whenever I can grow a copious amount of my own herbs and spices. So yes, that is what is going on currently. I did get rid of some things on the shelves that were really old, just past due. And I am also washing jars in the dishwasher currently. That's the noise. So tomorrow everything will be nice and clean and we'll be ready to start canning or starting the canning process. Hi! Oh, okay, there's a light behind me. I am so sorry. It is my like crochet light so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm sitting on the couch and I edited a little bit earlier and I've made like 500 thumbnails today for the video that came out. I hate making thumbnails. I feel like I am not good at them or they're not like attractive enough for people to click on them. I don't know. It's like the first impression, like the two things that matter the most are the thumbnail and the title, but I also like wanna make it simple for myself. I don't want to spend hours on a thumbnail, but then I end up making like 20 thumbnails. So I did that. I don't know. I'm kind of just like burnt out just for the day on editing thumbnails and watching YouTube. So I'm just going to sit on the couch. I'm going to try to find something on Hulu or Peacock. I don't know, something on the TV and I'm going to work on crochet. I actually have three pieces. I have the brown one, which I would like to put a little bit more work into. I have this fuzzy one. I don't even know if I've talked about this, but I'm making another cardigan just like the brown one and the back is the same, but the front is going to be like the granny square stitch. That's going to be like the front panels. I think it looks so good. It's so soft. I cannot wait to be done with this. Yeah, I really would like to try to finish at least one panel or work a little bit on the panel and hopefully finish it. And then I have this Noro sweater vest, which I already finished the back panel. And now I am making the front panel. I have used up three balls of yarn so far. This one is my fourth one. It's almost done. And this one is my fifth one that I ordered online. I don't know if Noro makes this colorway anymore. It's called Moon stones. It's so beautiful. I found one store that is selling this for a decent price. So I bought just one skein because that's all I need. And I'm thinking maybe I should have gotten two. Well, I need to finish the front panel and then I need to do ribbing around the armholes and like the hemline and the neck. I'm waiting for the temperature to go down so I can open up the windows and the door. It's getting really cloudy out and I don't know if it's going to rain, but it's totally cozy vibes over here. I hope I can find something. I'm not a huge TV watcher, so it might take me forever to find anything, but I'll see if I can find, I don't know, something. Okay, this is what I went with. I went with Chopped Season 38, which aired in 2018, and it looks like Martha Stewart is the judge on this, so that's what I'm going with. I'm gonna pop this on, zone out, and work on my little projects. Just try to have a nice, comfy, relaxing evening. Mm -hmm. 